Hi, welcome to Believe in Bitterford. I'm Brad Favreau. Uh, we've all seen the transit buses rolling in and around Saco and Bitterford. And uh, upcoming very shortly, we're going to see some changes. I am here with Craig Pendleton, who is the Director of External Affairs at the Bitterford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit Committee. Craig, thanks so much for joining Hello. me. You have been uh, evaluating these changes for quite some time now. You had public hearings recently to, uh, to get public input. Um, explain uh, briefly what kind of changes are taking place and what, what riders can see in the near future. Yeah, um, so I had the benefit of serving on the shuttle bus board for eight years and I've heard the conversation going on and on about this idea of a PULT system. And um, many of us thought that public transportation was complicated. Uh, we had buses that had numbers. We had buses that were referred to as the, uh, oh, and that's the bus that goes up to the shops at Biddeford Crossing. Right. Okay, but how do I explain that to you? Um, and so the Pulse system was developed to try to make it simplified and easier to understand that, uh, much like the T in Boston, there will be a colored route. That route will leave the Saco Transportation Center and will go out to the shops at Bitterfoot Crossing. It'll go to Old Orchard Beach. It'll go through the industrial park in Saco. Uh, we have one that goes to UNE. And every 75 minutes, those buses will come and go They'll connect with each other, and you'll know, um, I'm at the Saco Transportation Center. I want to go shopping in Biddeford. I'm getting on the Orange Line. Okay. Okay. So is it fair to compare it to the hub and spoke system that an airline might use? Very much so. Um, I, I think it was just referred to as a pulse. Um, we talked about it being the heartbeat of the community now. Yeah. You know, Coming in and yep. going out, coming in, going out. Yep. Uh, bit of it, especially building a new parking garage, hopefully developing uh, three Lincoln Street. We, we'll, you know, we've seen tremendous growth in the Bit of it's Old Orchard area, and mm -hmm. so you know we want to find the best way to service the communities. Um, let's let's give the viewers a little context. Um, how long has Shuttle Bus Zoom been in operation? Well, they were first formed in 1978. Um, there was a thought that um, we needed to uh, do public transportation. It went through some serious ups and downs. Um, I've read the original agreement. Um, I would tell you, you know, basically it was thrown together because they thought it might fail, that we maybe were ahead of our time. Um, it was in serious financial trouble for a while, um, and then we've pulled, a, we've pulled out and we're doing very well now. And we now service not only Biddeford, Sock Old Orchard, but we also service Scarborough, South Portland, and Portland. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, it's owned by the three communities. Um, that was the- that the, the municipalities. <coughs> yes. In conjunction own the system. It was a very interesting in agreement where um, all three communities agreed to pony up some money to keep the operations running and they all own the capital and so uh, there were things in there saying that you know if you wanted to pull out you needed to buy, buy your way out because we all own this capital. And so it's been a little bit of a hook to keep people in, but I think over the last uh, over the last ten years, I'd say uh, public transportation has really come out uh, in its own locally um, as the mills are developed, as population grew, and as business grew all through the industrial parks and out on Route One. Um, public transportation has become a necessity, mm -hmm. and so it's up to us to try to figure out how to make it you know, the most rewarding that we can make it. It's coming, it's, we have great support from all three communities. Uh, I think it was two years ago, 
we put together a three or four year plan to try to increase the amount of money that was being contributed by the communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a tough ask in a time when people are trying to make sure that uh, mill rates don't go up and sure. things like that. Right. And we've had wonderful support from the communities. Good. Good. Um, what, what is your ridership like? Uh, I wonder if you have a handle on uh, the demographics of your ridership and how your ridership has gone up or down over the last several years? Mm -hmm. It is forever increasing. Yeah. And I think that um, that's due to the growth in the area. Uh, we added routes to get people to work, um, going to the main mall, going to downtown Portland. Um, that became um, a, a very affordable way for business people to go to work especially during the times when the gas prices went up and things like that. Um, there seems to be two trends that are, that are uh, happening now that could potentially work in your favor. One is you know, an increased uh, uh, immigrant or new Mainer mm -hmm. population uh, that is settling all over the region, and uh, millennials who uh, anecdotally, uh, I, I certainly don't have any hard evidence, but you know, if you, what you read in the papers, uh, they're not too quick to get in a car and drive. Yep. So have you found those two factors to be uh, influential in uh, your growth and the decisions you've made? <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, we try to follow up on that. We do surveys all the time. Um, to get back to your question before, it kind of slipped my mind. We are well over 300,000 riders. I think it was 340 some odd thousand riders. Mm -hmm. um, we have a trolley system that we run that uh, services some of Route 1 in Saco and mostly in Old Orchard Beach. Um, that one did almost 150,000 riders in eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, trying to target our service to meet the community's needs. And so having a trolley in Old Orchard Beach in the summertime makes great sense. Sure. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience. Yeah. Um, I do believe that we have a perception problem that we have to uh, address. And we have not done a very good job of telling our own story. I think that public transportation is like looked at as a, it's a entity that's out there. Um, it's not glamorous and um, there is a perception that we only service the poor. And while that is a huge item that we do do, we try to make it very inexpensive. We, um, we try to make it very accommodating. Um, it is not only for the poor, it's for everyone. Right. Uh, we recently changed our mission statement to add the words for all, to try to make it so that people understood that. Um, I live in the mill. And I want to go down to the pier in Old Orchard Beach. It's, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars to park. For a dollar fifty I can jump on a bus and in a half an hour I can be down there and I don't have to worry about parking. And when I get ready to go home, I just look at the schedule and I hop on a bus and go home. Yeah. And again, kind of why I was brought to shuttle bus was um, we hadn't focused on ourselves. And so with a change in leadership at the, at the uh, shuttle bus, we now have an opportunity to look beyond our inner self and say, okay, what do we do well? Um, what's our story? And uh, how can we tell it the best way possible? And so I was really excited when you called and wanted to have me on your show. Yeah. Well, you know, personally, I, um, I, I enjoy public transportation myself. Planes, trains, automobiles, I don't care. I like getting on, pe on a, a, a vehicle with other people. You meet interesting people. It's very low stress. Well, okay, getting on an airplane, it can be a little <laughs> stressful. But uh, getting on a train or a bus is, is really a very positive experience. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, the 340,000 riders that you say you have now, is, 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 is that an increase over previous years? Oh yeah, every year we see an increase. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, we, funding is always an issue. 
Um, and so we recently were told that there, w there weren't any new funds available. And, you know, like real life, our buses are getting older, wages are going up, you know, our right. expenses are going up. And so we asked for an increase and there, was, there wasn't any money. And so we ended up having to cut one bus out of our intercity run that goes out to the main mall in Portland. And, um, you know, unfortunately, that was a successful run. And, um, you know, we'll see if, if we, you know, have an impact in our ridership. Hopefully, we adjusted the schedule and we can get people on the one run. But, you know, it's not as accommodating, and we recognize that. But... At the end of the day, you have to you have to have some money to pay for it. Right. Um, the one thing I've heard, again anecdotally, regarding ridership, well, a couple things that I'd like to address. Mm -hmm. One is um, getting to Portland and back is not really very easy. There's mm -hmm. a like as you pointed out, there's a limited number of runs that go back and forth, and uh, it's it's difficult for certain people to for example, you know, commuters, to make use of that. Um, it, 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 how much emphasis are you placing on that inner city run rather than the pole system, which will um, service the Saco Biddeford area? Uh, daily, we are having some pretty significant conversations about our future. Um, not to go too far off, off your question, but... Another thing that we're talking about is we feel like we have an identity crisis. Um, so you introduced us as the Biddeford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit Committee. That Which is, is your official name, yeah, right? That is the entity that owns us. Okay. So those are the representatives from the three communities. Um, they've formed a group, the committee, which we've referred to as the board, and they have the oversight of the <laughs> organization. Um, we hear people say they want to get on the Zoom bus. Right, so that's right. So our Zoom is the Turnpike Express that goes from the Biddeford Park and Ride to the Saco Park and Ride on the Turnpike to Portland. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was meant to be an express, business-related, you know, people that work in Portland, and we tried to get them as quick, there as quickly as possible. The routes are designed to be in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, the general public refer to everything we do as the Zoom bus, which is an interesting thing that we have to deal with. We get calls, uh, hey, I want to take the Zoom bus. And when you ask them where they want to go and they say the shops at Bidford Crossing, well, that's the local bus. And so, it, you know, we spend a lot of time explaining who we are and what we do. And so I think that, you know, We've decided that we need to rebrand ourselves. We need to have one name. Um, while we recognize that the communities own us, that's, that, that's the behind the scenes type of thing. Well, you know, uh, applying the name Zoom to all your buses isn't, wouldn't necessarily be a bad no. thing. No. It implies speed, right? That's, uh, it is one of the things that we've been talking about and how, um, you know, our logo is a genie right now, and it was really kind of an interesting to, to make your transit wishes come true. And so during this, <coughs> during this growth period, that might have been appropriate, but it doesn't scream public transportation. It doesn't scream buses. Right. And so, you know, I think that we'll find a simplistic bus logo um, we would like to make our, bu our bus drivers, not that they're not professional already, but more professional. They should have an emblem on their sleeve. When you walk on that bus, you need to know that that bus driver works for us and that bus driver is a professional. Mm -hmm. And I think that gets back to the comfort level of getting on a public transportation. Our bus driver is a professional. They know where they're going. They're going to be safe and they're going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. So getting back to the, the new system that you have um, ab about to be implemented, um, the Pulse system, mm -hmm. it will operate, if I understand correctly, out of the transportation center on Saco Island where the, the Amtrak runs in and out yep. of. Um, tell me the routes that will 
uh, take will go in and out of the transportation center there. Yep. Um, so first and foremost, we have been looking at how do we provide the best transportation locally, and then worry about externally. So um, when I was at the chamber. Um, and my cousin Perry Ann, who works as our mobility manager at Shuttle Bus, we both had been working on workforce development issues yeah. and workforce transportation issues. Very important. So as we started to implement the Pulse, we looked at, we didn't go into the Bob Dodge Industrial Park. Um, and you have, you know, Volt Packaging and you have Sterling Rope and Currens and they're all screaming for workers and one of the reasons that they're screaming for workers is the workers can't get to work. Right. So That's right. we said, okay, well, we're public transportation. We need to make sure that we have a route that services our growing businesses and our existing businesses. And so now when we um, have the Biddeford route, which will be, um, let me just go backwards a little bit. So our Biddeford route, comes and goes up Alfred to the uh, shops of Biddeford Crossing and then down Elm and then flip-flops the next time and goes up Elm and down Alfred. Okay. So trying to keep with local traditions and stuff, we've chosen colors to highlight the high schools. So in the Biddeford route, one of the routes going one way will be the orange route and then when you flip it, it'll be the black route. Okay. And, you know, our marquees will tell you and we'll have signs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we go up by Walmart and we have a shelter at the end of the Walmart parking lot and we service a lot of workers that go to Walmart. Um, and instead of coming to the um, thoroughfare that goes in between Route 1 and the Turnpike, we used to go left, we're gonna go right now and go up the street a little ways and go into Morin Street. So we'll service the entire length of Morin Street. The, and, Bitterford, in, the Bitterford Industrial yep. Park, yes. And planning ahead, Bitterford will have the new uh, courthouse and all that land being developed where the new courthouse is gonna go on Route 1. And so we'll come out at the end of Morin Street we'll go left onto Route 1 and we'll service all the Route 1 back up to Five Points. So that's a big expansion for us. Mm -hmm. um, but because that bus is no, no longer gonna go into service Saco or go into service Old Orchard Beach, we gain time. And so we'll be able to service the entire area. Um, we've been asked by Ocean State Job Lots um, to potentially add them as a stop. It's a complicated parking lot, but we might be able to go up in there and turn around and come back out. Those are the things we're working on now. The Saco route will be totally different. Um, same thing. We did not service the industrial park. And so same issues. We have businesses in there that you know, really need their workers. We all had done some work with Huddig when they were looking to expand. Mm -hmm. And so again, we heard we couldn't get high school kids there. P kids weren't taking driver ed because it was too expensive and it was privatized and it wasn't, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't get in. And so uh, the Center of Technology was telling us that they had, you know, 17 and 18 year old students that wanted to go to work but didn't have a driver's license. Mm. So we have to figure that one out and we have to get people to work. So we added the entire Saco Industrial Park We'll cut across Route 1, we'll go into the Millbrook Business Park, mm -hmm. and then we'll service the entire length of Route 1 all the way to Dunstan. And so that'll... All the way to Dunstan? Yeah. Wow, so, that's a big change. Big change. Um, we've been working with Ready Seafood. Mm -hmm. um, they're building a 90,000 square foot processing plant. We'll have a stop in there. We'll pull in to deliver their workers. Um, and then... We're trying to ensure you know, that we're in all the positions so that as more growth on Route 1 in Saco happens, uh, Hancock Lumber, right. um, where the new gym just went in, um, Cascades 
area is for sale. And so we want to make sure that we're prepared to service those areas. So you have all of these employers in both Saco and Biddeford, the industrial parks, the retail centers. I'm curious, how do you accommodate all those varying schedules? I mean, each employer could potentially have a different start and end date mm -hmm. at time of the day. How, how do you, logistically, how do you accommodate all of that and still maintain a schedule? Uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, we fail miserably. And, uh, <laughs> but I think, again, going back to my work at the Chamber with workforce development issues, um, when we went to Hudig, um, they had 28 openings and couldn't get a resume. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so you think about the stay-at-home mom or dad who could go to work but wanted to be there for their kids. Maybe there's a window of opportunity from you know, 8.30 in the morning till 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, would you turn that away if you were looking for workers? Mm -hmm. And so some of these businesses that have been seven to three, three to, you know, three to whatever, and, uh, even an overnight shift, um, have to rethink those schedules. Yeah, and if I understand correctly, some of those employers are willing to be a little flexible. Mm -hmm. Okay, my, my, my workers, the bus doesn't drop off till eight, my shift starts at 7.30, but you know, we can work with that. Are, are you finding employers willing to kind of meet you halfway or yep. adjust and, their schedules? And I think that with my new job, with this new title that, that Tony's given me, um, that'll be something that I'll work on. I think you know, better communication with the businesses um, is something that we need to do on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, going back to your original question and talking about we had public hearings, um, four or five people in Old Orchard came out and said, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I have to be to work in Portland at 7.15. Mm -hmm. I have to. And sometimes the bus is late. My boss will tolerate that sometimes, but not all the time. And so we had completely overlooked that route. And we had not, not planned to get them there on time. And so based on that feedback. It's just an oversight. Total oversight on our part. Yep. Um, based on their input, we went back the very next day and we've, we've redone two routes, especially the Old Orchard Beach route, um, to make sure that we change the, change the bus route and we'll get them to work on plenty of time. Good. Uh, one of the complaints that I've heard in, in our office in economic development is that uh, servicing the Biddeford Crossing area is difficult, or rather, employees who work at the Target, mm -hmm. the Market Basket, is difficult because the last bus leaves before their shift ends, so they're, if they take the bus, they're rather sta stranded at the end of the day. Has, has that been adjusted? Um, I, pr I think the quick answer is no. And I think that it's, it comes back to, we need to have a better understanding of who our riders are. Mm -hmm. um, I know in my short time there, um, we have people who are regulars who will call and say, you know, I am working today and I will be there to be picked up, which is great for us because then we can plan. Um, so are you saying that uh, all of the retail employees in Biddeford Crossing, if they were to call Shuttle Bus Zoom, action would be taken to adjust the schedule to a better accommodate their schedule? Well, of course the answer is yes. But I think be before we even get to that point, yep. uh, knowing that we have workers at Target and we have workers at Market Basket and, yep. they're, and they're closing it. 10 or 10.30 or whatever that, whatever that number is, we have to find a way to accommodate that. Right now it's been very complicated because Main Street shuts down, Elm Street shuts down, Alfred Street shuts down, and so how do we justify paying a driver, having a bus on the, on the road, and you know, unless ser you, but unless, servicing. Unless you have the critical mass there at Biddeford Crossing to exactly. make it worthwhile. Yep. Um, the, the other thing that we run into in that area 
is we have people that want to go to um, Applebee's, Home Depot, mm -hmm. New Life Church, yeah, mm -hmm. all those places. And that road was not built <laughs> to let passengers off. No. The Home Depot driveway is next to impossible for a bus to get up into. Yeah. And so it's really dangerous. And we try to accommodate people and we have people that are getting off at the park and ride and walking up over the bridge and, you know, we kind of cringe at all oh, those. Oh yeah, that's very so, dangerous. You know, we know that we need to come talk to you and see if there are things that can be done. And which leads me into an, you know, another thing. Bit of a and Old Orchard have been increasingly really responsive to us. Um, getting in the room immediately when a new development is spoken of. Um, but if it has a big housing development going in over by Barra Road, mm -hmm. the fact right. that the fact that you know we were approached, we can put a shelter there. We can figure out how to service that and get you know people rides that they need. Um, it's so much easier to do it before the property's built instead of after. Right. Um, we're working with Scarborough Downs. We signed a three-year contract to service Scarborough Downs on the on the residential end on Route One. Got a light there. We can make that left. We can go in. We can service that that area. Um, those are some things that you guys have been really good about, and that I at least I've seen a big change. So that when when a development's ready to go in, you know, will three Lincoln Street? make streets wide enough so that we can go in there with a the bus and go around however it gets developed and service that entire lot, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're hoping, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, a, a few moments ago, you made reference to Tony. I wonder if you could oh, tell yeah. our, our viewers who Tony is, what his last name is, and yep. what his position is. Yep, so um, Al Schutz, who had been the executive director for eight or nine years, uh, retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the committee went on a search for a new executive director. And uh, they chose Tony Scavuzzo. He's a Biddeford resident. Um, he um, has, his skills are uh, project management. And he comes from a, a company called Here Technologies. They make very accurate maps. Um, he talks about here Technologies is the map that's in your car that, because it's very accurate. Um, so he brings some technology uh, to the table. Um, again, going back to the Pulse and us maybe you know, looking at having a presence in the transportation center. Um, our buses should have GPS locators on them. They should have uh, video both in the bus and outside the bus. Um, we need to let people know that you know, the orange line is five minutes away and, you know, get, get ready for the bus coming. All of those sorts of technologies are now being built into packages that you can buy. And so uh, between Rod Carpenter and his skills and knowing, knowing the buses inside and out and Tony's technology skills, I think that, you know, we'll find a really good package to put on our buses. And kind of that opens up a, another line of communication of our buses are really old. Um, the federal government requires you to keep buses 12 years, 500,000 miles. And as you've probably experienced in your life, you can go out and buy a brand new car and it can last 10 years without, you know, maybe putting brakes and tires. Mm -hmm. You might have one that at four years you want to, you know, get rid of it because it's nickel and diming you to death. And so, you know, likely we have some buses that are like that. And so one of the things that's hurting us right now is our maintenance costs. Trying to repair 12 year old buses um, is complicated. Is that the average age, 12 years? Yeah, our, our fleet's very old. Um, it goes back to what I was telling you before. We were in a very bad financial position. Mm -hmm. And so between <clears throat> state and federal government funding, you need a local match. And we just didn't have the cash to put up for sure. our local match. And sure. so we did things like uh, Al, Al Schutz was from New York and he knew a lot of people in transportation in New York. 
And so um, a bus in, you know, mid-state New York that, you know, maybe doesn't have a lot of wear and tear on it, like, uh, like a, a big city bus, mm-hmm. um, we went out and bought some. And we had enough money to buy, you know, we could pay you seven, eight thousand dollars for a bus. We couldn't spend half a million on a bus. And so, is, is that the price of a brand new? Um, they're very bus? expensive. Yeah. Um, we're looking at some coach buses uh, right now. They're in the five, six hundred thousand dollar range. Wow. And I'm sure we'll get to it. But we are in line to get some electric buses. Yeah. And they're like eight hundred thousand wow. dollars. So it, you know, it's not chump change. Yeah. It's not something just go. Ah, yeah, we're gonna get rid of this one and get a new one. So yeah, and our trolleys are 19 years old. And so same thing, you know, try to find a part <laughs> for a trolley that's 19 years old. Right. Um, it's difficult and adds to the cost, um, our breakdowns. So, you know, you go out in the morning, you get some passengers, you have a breakdown. So we got to get some people to get a bus, to bring it to you, transfer people, either fix the bus and bring it home or get it towed. Um, and I think once, once we're in a much better financial place than we used to be, and so we're now, we're slowly we, we could possibly get these two coach buses. We could get two electric buses. We are in line for four trolleys. Slowly but surely, if we can turn that fleet over, uh, our expenses will go down. We'll have new, better buses to service the public, and uh, I think things will get better. So. Uh, after the pulse system is implemented, which I want to get back to more directly in a moment, but um, do you expect ridership to increase enough to, uh, to, to, to boost your revenue so that those new vehicles can be purchased? Or how, how, will those, how do you anticipate those newer vehicles being purchased? Um, so there are big federal programs. Um, if you remember, uh, Vol- Volkswagen cheated on their emissions, right? and yeah. so there was a huge settlement um, between us and Metro in Portland. I think the number is like $3.2 million that we're getting to purchase four electric buses, two for Portland, two for us. Um, with that will come the infrastructure that goes with it. At our location in Biddeford, we will have an overnight charging system where you plug the buses in so that they slowly charge overnight. But at the train station in Saco, we will have an overhead um, fast charging unit where every time we go around and around town, um, we can go underneath that charging unit for 10 minutes and get a fast charge. Um, We purposely are trying to get the buses here in January so that you know, we face the worst of the worst conditions mm-hmm. and see how they're going to work. Mm-hmm. You know, they can tell you you can go 400 miles on a charge until you get to Maine in the wintertime. We'll see how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a grant that the Volkswagen Corporation um, floated because uh, I, I imagine, you know, it's better pl- publicity to offer these kinds of grants in the wake of their uh, clean diesel, um, what's a good word for it, uh, debacle, yeah. for lack yeah. of a better word. And so, you know, as they were pushed on that issue, um, there was a big, a big uh, transition to zero emissions. Yeah. And so, you know, electronic, ele- electric technology has really changed. Um, if you remember your cell phone a few years back, they told you to make sure you ran the battery down as far as possible. Yes. Don't, don't keep charging little by little because it'll have a memory. Right. It doesn't happen anymore. Right. Um, those are some big things. You know, the, the, the amount of charge that's in a battery um, is way better than it used to be. And so you know, we feel pretty confident that it'll be a smart move for us. Um, our longest route is something like 23 miles or something like that. Most of the local routes are 14, 15, 18 miles. And so, you know, we could probably go all day long on a charge. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works. And how many buses uh, are you anticipating? Two electric buses. Two electric buses. Yep. And, uh, and any uh, conventional 
Internal combustion, buses um, on the horizon? <clears throat> we're in line for trolleys right now. Um, we felt that our trolleys are, uh, are older, yeah. so they needed to be replaced. And so um, we've asked for four trolleys. And uh, again, there's multiple funding mechanisms that come into play. Um, and then um, we have been approved for two coach buses for the turnpike route. And again, coming back to, we have some big decisions to make. Um, is that route feasible for us to continue? The, the route to Portland you're speaking yep, on of. on the turnpike. Yep. Um, <clears throat> there is a conversation that's been started that there is a major development at Scarborough Downs. Mm -hmm. And there'll be commercial, there'll be residential. And so, um, again, to get, going back to um, people like you inviting us into the room right from the beginning, there was a conversation that maybe the center of that becomes a hub. And we go to Scarborough, Metro comes to Scarborough, South Portland comes to Scarborough, and we make, that's where all the transitions happen. Mm -hmm. um, do we need a coach bus to do that or you know, could we um, potentially say no thank you to this coach because we think a local bus would be uh, more appropriate because it's more of a Route 1 run now into Scarborough. Um, great conversations to be having mm -hmm. and we want to make sure we're making the right decisions because they are an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, you know, we've been surveying our passengers we have been surveying uh, businesses <clears throat> to see if there is growth potential. And I didn't answer the question earlier, but, and, and I don't really want to mess it up, but revenues coming into shuttle bus have to be used first before you can you know, use grant money. Okay, that makes sense. So it, Sometimes when we talk about this, it comes out as a negative that you're, raise, you know, you, you're raising revenues and it sounds like you're losing grant money and, and it's not really the case. It's just the particular pecking order right. that you use it. And so, yep, if we have more revenues and we have more riders, it's all a good thing. Um, but you have access to fewer grant dollars. Potentially. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, to continue chasing your, cha your tail, you need those revenues to create a pot of money for your local match to go for a grant. You, you, you live this world. Sure. And uh, I find it very complicated. Um, I'm still learning. I've only been there eight months. Yeah. And uh, so I'm still learning the ins and outs and who the people are and where the money comes from. And um, it's above my pay grade at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so when can riders expect the new system to be in place, the new pulse system to be in place 100%? Yep. Uh, originally, it was July 1st, mm -hmm. and as the project was kind of turned over to me um, and we created this new external affairs role, um, I just became very concerned. We want to do it right. We don't want to do it quickly. And so while we've been talking about it for a long time, there were many details that had not been worked out. Something as simple as... Uh, most recently, we worked with all the communities and we have new signage out. Um, we were trying to be accommodating. And so we, if you raised your hand on the side of the road, we would stop and get you. Well, again, our buses are old. And um, people with disabilities, we have to lower the bus. We call it kneeling. Right. And some have ramps and lifts to help get uh, people on the bus. Every time you kneel that bus, a compressor has to go on to shift the air into specially designed um, underneath products. And then that compressor has to go again to make the bus come up. So the more we were stopping and going, the more breakdowns we were having. And, you know, there's a stop sign, there's a bus stop right there, but you won't walk there you're waving your hand at us. And there may be people over there too. And so, so you're stopping multiple times. Multiple times. Yeah. And, you know, granted, we wanted to be accommodating. Right. We had to get away from that. And so now we have signs all over the communities. And they're green and white. 
they have a bus on them and has a person hailing the driver. Um, Pulse system is now color coded. So the other day I had to sit down and go, okay, now we need to order new stickers <clears throat> for all the signs in each community to say this is the orange line, this yes. is the black line, yeah. this is the blue line. Yeah. Who thinks of those things? And so I quickly went in to see Tony and said, you know, I just think we need another month um, in, in order for us to have everything in place and make sure that we are, you know, 100% sure that we're ready to launch this thing. Something as simple as taking a bus out and running, you know, riding the route and practicing to make sure that we can do it in 70 or 75 minutes. Right, test runs. Yeah, you can do it in a car. It is not the same as doing it on a bus. Oh, I can imagine, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. Um, so what's the new rollout date? August 1st. August 1st, okay. Yep. Um, we will have all the buses at the train station <coughs> in, in Saco. And um, two of the morning routes will be different. And again, going back to accommodating the people in Old Orchard. Um, and I think the Saco Industrial Park, too, we're thinking that we don't need to be there at five o'clock in the morning. Um, but we're, tomorrow we're running the routes, to, um, me and a, a driver supervisor, and we are making sure that we have stops in different locations. So again, working with the communities, there are no signs in the Saco Industrial Park. Mm -hmm. we, have to pick, we have to pick spots. Sure. We have to go into the Biddeford Industrial Park. We have to go out on Route 1 where, you know, that we've never had a stop out there before. So um, got to get the communities to help us put the signs up. I have to shoot them with a GPS uh, handheld device so that we can document w where the GPS location is because um, as we get ready, we will launch an app like Portland has and other, other you know, big cities have so that you can go on your phone and say, where's the next bus? Yes. I mean, we got to get... critical yeah. these days. We, we recognize we are way behind in technology. Yeah. yeah. But again, you know, you have to get yourself in a financial spot, and we finally are there. And, good, um, good. We, we'll be launching those soon. And so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go 30, 60 days. We'll be, we'll be on the bus asking people how things are going. Um, we really encourage input. Um, we'll have we'll have things on our website. You can call the shuttle bus anytime. Uh, we have people that will work on this nonstop, and you know we're we're wide open to making accommodations to people. Okay, we want to make it work. So when will the uh, the new schedules be published on your website? Um, really good question. They're about ninety percent done. Okay. Um, after we ride them tomorrow, um, they'll be pretty close. And so... So mid July, is it fair to mid -July, say mid July? Yeah, um, the next thing we'll run into is how busy are the printing presses. We, we have a design all ready to go. We've hired a graphic artist to work with us to, you know, like when you walk into um, the T in Boston and you yeah. can see all the different yeah. colored routes. Yeah. We're doing that for our, our stuff too. We'll have them in the Chambers of Commerce. We'll have them maybe at City Hall. Um, we'll have them in the, in the Transportation Center. And so, um, you know, my life would be very happy if uh, they came out in mid-July. Mm -hmm. So we have a chance to get them out to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing, you know, it's like, how many do you print in case you gotta make a change? Right. But be that as it may, I think that we'll have it down pretty well. and We'll be able to go for a while and, and really work out the kinks and work out the bugs and start to build an infrastructure in the transportation center. Um, another good thing about the Pulse is that now it brings buses with the trains, taxis. Um, I know when I was at the chamber, uh, when we were at the train station, we got a lot of requests for bikes. When people wanted to come up and ride their bikes. Right. So, you know, either maybe a business will open that will rent bikes, or maybe we can invest in one of those card swipe things where you rent a bike right at the train station. Um, lots of opportunities and interconnecting all the different modes of transportation. 
I think well, a, I think that's critical yeah. moving forward into the coming decades. Um, um, it's going to start taking many different forms of transportation, not just jumping in your car and going to uh, to get where you need to go. Yeah. Um, so uh, if riders or if viewers have any questions uh, that we haven't quite answered today, who what's the best method to get through to somebody at uh, shuttle bus Zoom. Yep, uh, and, I'll give you. And who should somebody speak to? I'll give you a couple of uh, different avenues. So, Perry Ann Carpenter, mm -hmm. uh, her job is mobility manager. And, mobility manager, yeah, Perry Ann Carpenter. There's only three in the entire state of Maine. Um, it's a new, it's a new uh, position where anything that has to do with getting you from one place to another, and if you have questions or we need to make special accommodations, a uh, good example is we have an uh, outstanding uh, partnership with York County Community Action. They have more of what's called an on-demand service. Mm -hmm. So you know that every Tuesday for a while you need to go to the doctors. Mm -hmm. We don't go to where your doctor is. And so, but, but you call us, we'll put you in touch with York County Community Action and you will work out a situation where they'll come get you and take care of you. Okay. Perry Ann knows all about that, can help you with all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you can call me, uh, and, uh, or you can email us, where um, I'm C. Pendleton at shuttlebus-zoom.com. Um, Perry Ann is P. Carpenter at shuttlebus-zoom.com. Um, our customer service person, Tammy Devine, She's very much aware we will be sitting down with all our customer service people, um, explaining to them the new routes, the new colors, the new everything. And so, so it sounds I, like Tammy's the first line of defense. Tammy will be the one that answers the phone. Yep. And if she can't answer your question, she will put you through to somebody. And if we can't answer the question right then and there, we'll find out and we'll get back to you. Okay, and what is that phone number that riders, potential riders can use? Yep, it's uh, our telephone number is 282-5408. 5408. Yep. 282-5408, okay, good. Yep, and uh, we're at www.shuttlebus-zoom.com is our website, and uh, you'll be seeing some significant changes to our website as we put the Pulse system on there, um, more ways of getting the public to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Um, I'd like to see some of the local businesses advertise on our, um, our site. And um, one of the things I forgot to tell you when, you know, as we reach out to the businesses, also things like temp agencies, encouraging businesses to put on their ad that they're on the bus route or yes. they're within a quarter mile of a bus route. Yeah. Um, again, it's more and more important. Going back to people not owning a vehicle or not right. have a, dr a driver's license. Or not wanting to. New Mainers, uh, right. takes a while. Right. And so knowing that there's an opportunity to get to work on a bus is a big deal. Great, great. Well, Craig, I'd like to have you back and perhaps some of your colleagues at Shuttle Bus Zoom in six months. Yeah. To, to, to follow up and see how the new system has been going and how uh, ridership has changed for you all. That'd be fun. But in the meantime, thank you for joining us on Believe in Biddeford. We'll see you next time.